it again. God is good. Oh, yes, he is. He's good all the time. What a time and season we are in. I love it. We're seeing so many things being manifested. Amen? Things that are coming to the surface, including demons. <laughs> Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. I just want you to see this for a second because there's so many symbolic symbols in the Word of God. And I want you to see something very powerful because when angels used to show up, they used to call them Lord. Everybody understand that? When angels used to show up to many mankind, they would say, Lord. In fact, um, even when they showed up to Abraham and so forth, they, he, they would say, Lord. Because the angels were Lord over them also. They were working on our behalf, but they were still Lord over us. And, and so in this, it wasn't just the area of the Lord God Almighty, but it was the angels were also known as Lord. Not that they worshiped the angels, amen, although some of them fell down before them because of their appearance. Now, if an angel of the Lord shows up in front of you, you're going to kind of freak out a little bit, especially the presence of God. Their presence radiates God. I mean, just radiates off them because they come from the, fresh, from the throne room of the Lord. They're carrying the fresh presence of God. If they show up, they'll rip you apart. Just their presence. You'll be crying, Lord. Not that you're worshiping them. Does everybody understand that? Because it's the Lord's presence that you're honoring. Amen? Okay. Just wanted to share this with you for a moment as we go further. Then she bore again, and this time his, his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. In the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought the firstborn of the, his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain in his offering. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. Why? Because Abel was bringing blood. Does everybody got it? He was bringing blood. Cain was not bringing blood, a sacrifice, because the life of the flesh is in the blood. Amen? So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, amen, if you cooperate, you will, not, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin, the presence of evil, lies at the door. In other words, it's knocking for you. And its desire is for you. But you should rule over it. You should what? Rule over it. Now, again, we see here that you have Cain and you have Abel. There are actually two nations here. One is the nation of the flesh, and one is the nation of the spirit. Does everybody understand that? One is the nation of inheritance. One is a nation that's not of inheritance. Go to 1 John chapter 3 and verse 11. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of the what? He was of the wicked one. And murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brothers were what? His brothers were righteous. Now, this is very powerful. Cain was of the wicked one. That means he was an offspring of the serpent. Amen? He was of the wicked one. Go to Genesis 4, verse 25.
Then Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and named him Seth. For God has appointed another seed for me instead of Abel, whom Cain killed. Now, did you notice the difference between one said, Lord, and the other one said, God? Does everybody see this? Is everybody okay? So we see here that Seth replaced Abel. So everybody got it. Cain was of the wicked one. Amen? Abel was of the righteous seed. And so when the wicked one killed the righteous one, God had to replace. But it said God replaced it didn't say that it was the Lord. There's a difference. Okay, let's go a little further. So Seth was from God, Cain was from the Lord, or what we call the an angel. And who was an angel? He was a cherub, wasn't he? Lucifer. Amen. Seth was of the righteous, Cain and was an heir of corruption. Seth was an heir of righteousness okay let's go somewhere else let's go to Genesis 6 verse 1 now it came to pass when man began to multiply in the face of the earth that the daughters were born to them and the sons of God which were angels saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose so they put on flesh, didn't they? The book of Enoch talks about 200 angels that put on, put on flesh. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came in to the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old men of renown. And the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds or, and of the air. For I am sorry that I had made them, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. In other words, he found grace favor he found God was planning escape for him wasn't he what did he do he built an ark to escape the flood amen so we see that giants came they were known as the nation of the flesh and remember it says that the angels were already there were giants already on the earth because they came from the lineage of Cain because Cain was an offspring of the serpent amen and so when they reproduced, they produced giants. And then more giants were produced because 200 angels put on flesh and came into the world. All right, let's go a little further. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 12. Two nations. The nations of flesh and the nations of the spirit. Now, when I mean about the spirit, it means that inheritance, God's promise of inheritance also. Okay. The nation of righteousness. Let's speak it together. But what I do, I will also continue to do that I may cut off the opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the things which they boast. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves in the apostles of Christ. <laughs> transforming themselves in the apostles of Christ. Wolves in sheep's clothing. Amen. And no wonder for Satan himself, does everybody see this? Transforms himself into a what? Into an angel of light. Mm. So you think that angel of light is very possible, the one that impregnated Eve and produce an offspring because you can shapeshift 
Verse 15, therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of what? Righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. Wow. Why? Because it will be according to the works. You'll know the difference between those who are of the flesh and those who are of the spirit. Go to Isaiah 14, verse 12. How you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. That's what, well, son of the morning. What happens in the morning? The sun rises. Amen? In other words, light bearer. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nation. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of, con of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the what? Most high. Well, this was Dad's response to that moron. Yet you shall be brought down to hell, homie, to the lowest depths of the pit. Wow. So he was also known as the son of the morning, the mor uh, a light bearer. Does everybody get it? We just saw that he came as an angel of light. Amen? Now here's another thing. Let's go somewhere. Uh, oh, yeah. Ezekiel 28, verse 11. Ezekiel 28. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take a lamentation for the king of Tyre, and say to him, Thus says the Lord God. Now, you know he's not talking about somebody physically. You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Well, there wasn't any man sealed with perfection except for Jesus. Verse 13, you were in Eden, the garden of God. Who was in Eden, the garden of God? The serpent, Adam and Eve, amen, Jesus. So who's he talking to? Watch. Every precious stone was your covering, the star, uh, sardius, topaz, diamond, braille, onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was Prepare for you on the day you were created. So you know he's talking to Lucifer, who is the praise and worship leader of the universe. You were the anointed cherub who covers, what, the universe with praise. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery storm. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created to what? Iniquity was found in you. So he was also in the garden, wasn't he? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Matthew 24 and verse 3. Now, as Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when these things will be and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one what? Deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and I will, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Are we hearing rumors of wars and wars and, and, you know, they're trying to promote war? For nation will rise against nation. I want you to go a little bit deeper and see this because this is about the nation of the spirit against the nation of the flesh. And kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places, and all these things are the beginning of sorrows. Wow, nation against nation, race of flesh against the race of the spirit. John chapter 8 and verse 43. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the what? Devil. And the desire, desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning. No way. He's a father of murders, right? Murders. They Cain, murder Abel. Amen. And does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, 
you don't believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. Man, he's telling the Pharisees and Sadducees this. What is he telling me? You are the nation of the flesh, not of the spirit. You are the race of the flesh, not of the spirit. You have no birthright, but you need to get one. Oh, you have no inheritance, but you need to get one. Genesis 25, verse 20. Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah, his wife, the daughter of Bethel, the Syrian of Padan, Aram, the sister of Laban, and the Syrian. Now Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord granted his plea, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. But the children struggled together within her. And she said, if all is well, why am I like this? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb. Hello. Two peoples shall be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other. The older shall serve the younger. In other words, the latter shall serve the... Hallelujah. So when her days were fulfilled for her, for her to give birth, indeed there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red. He was like a hairy garment all over, so they called his name Esau. Afterward, his brother came out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel, so his name was called Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. So the boys grew, and Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, but Jacob was a mild man dwelling in tents. Anybody else know a big, a big name hunter? How about Nimrod? Yeah. Another off seed of the Nephilim race. Verse 28. And Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Now Jacob cooked a stew, and Esau came in from the field, and he was weary. And Esau said to Jacob, please feed me with that same red stew, for I am weary. Therefore his name was called Adam. But Jacob said, sell me your birthright as of this day. Ooh, snap. You know how many people sell their birthright for one night of fun? For drugs? For alcohol, for fame, they sell their birthright, break covenant with God, and die. And Esau said, look, I am about to die. So what is the birthright to me? Whoa. And Jacob said, swear to me of this day. So he swore to him and sold him his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread, stew of lentils. Then he ate and drank, arose and went his way. Thus, Esau despised his birthright. Does everybody see this? So there was two nations, right? A nation of the flesh, a nation of the spirit. Esau sells his birthright to Jacob for a moment of fulfillment, which is only temporary. Amen? This is where we are right now. We are in a battle of the flesh and the spirit. Galatians 5.19. Now, the works of the flesh are evident, which are what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, rivalries, and the like, of which I told you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. In other words, who you serve when you die is where you go. Amen. Why? Because these are the works of the flesh. That's how you know people. You'll know them by their desire. Amen. 
Those are called fruits. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and control over yourself. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have what? Crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Wow. So the works of the flesh is known as the nation of the flesh, the race of the flesh. And the works of the Spirit are known as the works of the Spirit. There's a battle going on right now, globally, all over. Amen? And Galatians 3. So the flesh has to be crucified or it will take dominion over you. Because you and I were born in the flesh. But we were born again in the Spirit. So if you're not being led by the Spirit of God, and you're not starving your flesh, it can't be crucified. Your flesh will lead you. And you'll become a nation of the flesh again. Not a nation of the Spirit. And Galatians chapter 3 and verse 1, let's speak it. O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Well, that's deception. That's witchcraft. Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before those eyes which Jesus Christ has clearly portrayed among you as crucified? This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by hearing of the faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? In other words, they backslid. Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Therefore, know that only those who are of the faith are the sons of Abraham. And the Scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, if in you all nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of the faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Wow. Again, they were bewitched, they were deceived, and they got seduced. Starting off in the spirit. So they had to first start off in the flesh, because we all do. Then they got into the spirit, got born again in the spirit. Then they went back into the flesh. Because they got bewitched. It's witchcraft. Amen? And where does really witchcraft come, it, it, where does it really hinder you most? In the mind. As a man thinks, so he speaks. That's why it's called the voice of the stranger. It's called fiery darts. That's why you need to have the full armor of God, the helm of salvation, renewing your mind all the time. Amen? In fact, let's go there. Romans 12.1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your responsibility or your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to the world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your thoughts, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, you're either resetting to advance, or you're resetting to repeat. Amen? Because God will not allow you to advance if you haven't fulfilled what he's asked you to do. You will constantly reset, reset, repeat, 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 until you complete what he's asked you to do. Amen? So there's a resetting to advance, or there's a resetting to repeat. Amen? Well, until you get it. It's that simple. Why? Because he loves you. Not because he doesn't love us. He just doesn't want us to do the same old thing again. How stupid can we be and still breathe? Right? Well, that's what the de devil does. He brings stupidity by what? Allowing us right here 
thoughts, not renewing the thoughts. I mean, what do you, in other words, you're not renewing the thoughts by getting secular books or watching uh, programs that are, you're get, doing it by getting eternal things. Amen? Because you can't build bridges with the knowledge of the world. Not in the spirit. You'll step in sinking sand all the time. Bridges are built over sinking sand with the tools from eternity, from the eternal realm. That's wisdom, discernment, and understanding from God Almighty. That's how you build bridges. Amen? Or you'll fall into sinking sand all the time. It's all over the place. The Bible tells us that many were with us, but they were not of us. So they went out to what? To be manifested. Why? Because they started in spirit and went back to flesh. It's amazing how many times people come through the program. The first thing they do when they leave, when they know they're not supposed to leave, they go get cigarettes. They go feed the flesh. Why? Because the flesh is dying to get fed. It's cigarettes, dope, or something else, you know. And why do they call it dope? Because it makes you stupid. 1 Timothy 4. And verse 1. Two nations. What's the battle? Flesh against the spirit. We're seeing it all over, man. And you'll know them by their choices. You'll know them by their desires. First Timothy chapter 4, let's speak it. Now the Spirit expressly says that in their latter, ti latter times. Are we in the latter times? Some will depart from the faith. They'll depart from walking in the Spirit. Giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. In other words, voice of the stranger. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Ooh, yeah. Hallelujah. Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. That sounds wonderful. But then it continues. Who do not walk according to the flesh, <laughs> but according to the what? Spirit. So is there condemnation to those who are walking in the spirit? No. But there are those condemnation walking in the flesh who proclaim in to be Christians, right? But they're not walking in the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Wow. That's wild. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. In other words, there's a life of surrender and there's a life of survival. Amen. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Does everybody see it? Cannot please, please God. We're not battling other countries. We're not battling humanites. We're battling powers of darkness that are influencing the flesh and trying to deceive the spirit in us. Amen? That's why if you are led by the Spirit of God, you are crucifying your flesh, which is another nation. It's another race. Your flesh is of another race. It is a race of the fallen. It is a race of sin. It's a race of murder. It's a race of evil. That's why God warned us in His Word. 
in the works of the flesh. If you're practicing such things, that cannot inherit heaven. Just can't. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. As days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves. What's he talking about? Those who are in the flesh. The Trinity is me, myself, and I. They will be lovers of money. They will be boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control. They're brutal, brutal despisers of good. They're traitors. They're headstrong. They're haughty. They're lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Oh, they have a form of godliness, but they deny its power. They're double-minded. They're unstable. And from such people do what? Turn away. Why? Because bad company corrupts what? Good habits. Hello. That is the nation of flesh. Again, there's the nation of flesh, and there's the nation or the race of the spirit. I'm going to close at Matthew 13, verse 24. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field, right? But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. And went his way. Now again, the tares are nation of the flesh. Amen. The wheat is the nation of the spirit. But when the grain had sprouted and produced the crop, then the tares also appeared. Well, they're appearing everywhere, aren't they? So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? And he said to him, an enemy has done this. The servant said to him, do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, no. Lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. Let me not tell you right now, it's harvest time. Amen? It's harvest time. And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them in the bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. This is where we're at. Amen? Two nations. Two nations. Flesh and spirit. Those who are led by the flesh and those who are led by the spirit. Those who have inheritance and those who don't have inheritance. And I'm going to tell you that the enemy is going to come stronger and stronger and stronger and try to sell, get you to sell your inheritance, your birthright, for a moment of flesh. Amen? For a moment of falsely desire. It's important that you stay filled with the Spirit of God and keep you resetting every day. Money doesn't rescue you. People can't rescue you. Only God can rescue you. Amen.